Hi guys, it's John here, and this is another benchmark comparison between the Galaxy S22 Ultra series, Galaxy S23 Ultra, Galaxy S24 Ultra, and the Galaxy S24 Plus. So they've all got the June update now, so it is summer here in the UK, so it's a bit warmer. It is about 24 degrees in the office here, so it's going to be interesting to see what the results are like this month for our Geekbench and 22 3D Mark and then our browser bench. What we're really hoping here is to see some big improvements from the S24 Ultra because over the last couple of months it has been lacklustre at best. Can the S23 Ultra keep up in the heat and how is the S24 Plus going to perform in its first summer in the wild? So as always we'll run through three Geekbench tests here on each the CPU and GPU and then we'll average out the results and see how they all compare. You can see here they've all started at a 100% battery charge. You can see that the S24 is already a few degrees warmer than the other phones, but we'll see how it goes during the tests. Okay, so so far we've seen a good improvement here from our CPU results for the S24 Ultra here. It's now taken back the best overall score on average for the single and multi-core compared to last month. S24 Plus, not too far behind in the multi-core, but reasonably far behind on the single core, but still beating the S23 Ultra. And the two S22s here, Snapdragon Exos 2200, just staying around the same as they were last month. So let's move on to the GPU test now and we'll see how they do here. Okay, so we can see not much difference here in the GPU mark compared to last month, and the winner is still the S24 Plus here with a score of 15,427, followed pretty closely by the S24 Ultra, S23 Ultra, and the S22 Exos 2200, followed by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Pretty average results there, but some improvement there for the S24 Ultra, which is good to see at last. Now I'm just going to run through the Geekbench ML test here. This will test all the AI capability of the phones, then we can compare them to last month and see if there's been any improvements at all. Do notice that the phones here are running pretty warm. We've got 36 and 36, we've got 38 over here, and the coolest of the bunch is the S23 Ultra. Battery wise, we're down to 90, 91, 94, 94, and 93%. Okay, so after the Geekbench ML tests, we have the S24 Plus still remain the overall winner as it was last month, throwing more points than all the other phones. Interesting result was the GPU test of the S23 Ultra and S22 Ultra, Exos 2200, being exactly the same with 1083. So yeah, some interesting results, but nothing too dissimilar to last month. We'll let the phones cool down a bit before we move on to the Antutu test. We're down to 84%, 85, 89, 90, and 88. Temperature-wise, we've got 38, 37, 37, 36, and 35. Right, so we've let the phones cool down a bit now and we're going to run through Amplitude Benchmark and see how they compare to last month's scores. Temperature here is still at 24 degrees, so it is still warmer than last month, but we'll see how they cope with this added heat. Okay, so no improvements there from last month, but no major problems either compared to last month, just losing a couple of percent on each, which isn't too bad considering the extra heat here in the UK. Obviously the clear one is still the S24 Ultra, but the S24 Plus is still not very far behind. Then followed by the S23 Ultra, the S22, Snapdragon Engine 1, and then the Exos 2200. Okay, so we're going to move on to the stress test now, and we're going to actually run this for 45 minutes this time, just to see a more sustained version of the results. So we can't really compare it to last month now, but if we do a 45 minute test each month, then hopefully that will make it a more realistic test of sustained sort of gaming. Okay, so some pretty horrendous results here this month. We had problems with both the S24 Plus overheating, the two S22 Ultras also overheating as well. I did try and start them back off again, but it was a bit too late for the Exynos 2200. I'm actually getting a bit out of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Now the only two that didn't overheat, 
it got up to about 43.7 degrees each with the S23 Ultra and the S24 Ultra. And you can see here, even though they both look very similar here, clocking down very strongly here to the 1.5 gigahertz mark here on the S23 Ultra, you still see a couple of calls here running at around two gigahertz, just below for the majority of the test. S24 Ultra is slightly different here. You can see that the Core 7 is clocked just about 1.7 gigahertz, so it is actually clocked a bit higher than the S23 Ultra. But we can see here the other cores are all well below two gigahertz. So not sure what to make of that really but uh, not very good overall. CPU performance wise below 60%, so about 55%, and about 65% here for the S24 Ultra, so I guess overall that is the winner. Now the S24 Plus here I only did a half an hour test on, so the results are slightly different. Again, we can see about 60% average performance after about five minutes. Takeaway from this is obviously in hot countries or hot environments, you are going to struggle if you're doing high-end computing on your phone. Right, so we've let the phones cool down now. They're all at ambient temperatures as much as can be. So we're going to do the Steel Nomad light stress test and see how they compare compared to last month. So some quite interesting results here for the Steel Nomad test. We can see here the overall winner is actually the S24 Plus this month with a best loop of 1830 and a lowest of 1156. Now that lowest loop is actually better than the best loop of the S23 Ultra, which is quite interesting. Now the best instability, however, is still the S23 Ultra here with 75% compared to 63.2, which is the next best on the S24 range, which is quite sad, really. We'd hope at least a better stability overall on the newer series. The Exynos 2200 interestingly beating the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 here. And you can see we're now down to 49%, 49%, 55%, 60 and 52 So the S24 Ultra is still better with its battery. It is obviously one year newer than the S23 Ultra. Okay, so we'll just finish off with the Jetstream 2 browser bench. That will conclude the test. You can see here the S24 Plus has actually come into the lead here on its browsing benchmark. We've scored 211 versus 195 on last month's winner, the S23 Ultra. So quite a big leap there for the S24 Plus, although all have actually seen a decrease from last month, but it's interesting to see how that has come into the lead. Third place goes to the S24 Ultra, fourth to the 8 Gen 1, and fifth to the Exos 2200, with an abysmal score of 92. So you can see the final temperatures here. We have ended on around 35 to 37 on each phone with the ambient temperature in here being at 25 degrees. Final battery results are 47, 47, 53, 59, and 50. But of course, we've got to hand it to the S24 Plus being June's winner, winning five of the seven tests today, which is pretty impressive really, considering it's up against the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the 8 Gen 2 with its Exynos 2400. So overall, I'd still say the S23 Ultra, considering it's one year older than the S24 Ultra here, is still performing the best overall. Although it didn't actually win any of the tests, it did stay cooler most of the time. And you can tell even just from the screen alone, it is a better phone than the S24 Ultra. So I hope this video was useful. If it was, please do like and subscribe. Don't forget to leave any comments you have down below and I'll see you again in the next video.